Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're talking about some very simple tips and tricks to help elevate and enhance your makeup look. There are some things that I've noticed that if I skip them, my overall makeup look just doesn't look quite as good. It's like when there's something missing and you can't quite put your finger on it. These seven steps are what really pull a makeup look together. They give you more defined features, more radiance, and an overall more perfected look. And I'm going to demonstrate all of these steps throughout the video so that you can see exactly how to do them. Before we begin, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. And now let's get into today's video. This first step is one that I really recommend not skipping, and it's curling your lashes at the start of your makeup routine. Curling your lashes is one of those steps that doesn't get a lot of attention in makeup tutorials, but it produces such big results when it's done correctly. And I recommend doing this at the start of your makeup routine because it will prevent any smudging or creasing in your foundation or your concealer, and it will allow you to get as close to the root of the lashes as possible. I'm using a Tweezerman lash curler. You can use whatever you have and I'm going to place the curler all the way to the root of my lashes with the curler completely open. Then slowly close it and gently hold the curl for about 10 seconds. Then once I've done that initial curl, I like to go back and pulse again for about another 10 seconds to really make sure that curl stays in place. And I find the easiest way to do this is to hold a small mirror very up close to you so that you can see exactly what you're doing. So you can see what a difference that makes. With a proper curl, your lashes look so much longer, thicker, and fuller, and it makes your eyes appear larger and more awake. And if your lashes are good at holding a curl, you won't have to go back and recurl them after all of your concealer and your eye makeup is applied. But if you do need to go back and recurl them, there's much less of a chance of smudging your concealer and ruining your eye makeup if you've already got a slight curl to your lashes. The next two tips have to do with the eyes. Now, my eye makeup is mostly complete, but there are two things that I would do to really elevate this look and make it look a little bit more perfected. I've already applied some eyeshadow, mascara, and some eyeliner on my upper lash line. But the first thing that I would do is I would take a clean blending brush and buff out the edges of my eyeshadow, especially on the outer corner where I've placed some darker colored shadow. I would really go over it very gently with a clean brush to soften those edges and make sure that everything looks very well blended. Notice I'm holding the brush at the end of the handle so that I use a very light pressure and just gently go back and forth or in circular motions around the edges of the shadow. This way you can't tell where the eyeshadow starts and stops. It may be very subtle, but I think that the blended eyeshadow looks just a little bit more elevated than the side that hasn't been blended. And it's one of those steps that can easily be overlooked, but it only takes a second and it makes a difference in the overall look. Step number three has to do with tight lining. So I think we all know the trick of placing a nude or a white colored eyeliner in the lower waterline to brighten the eyes and make them look bigger, but I think it's equally as impactful to line your upper waterline with a black or a brown pencil to make your lashes appear fuller and just really take your eye look to the next level. So to do this, you would take a waterproof pencil, make sure that it's sharpened very well, and then gently lift your lid at the root of the lashes to expose your water line. Then holding your pencil straight up, you can gently dot at the waterline, just pressing in very lightly and go all the way across. And if you're new to this, you can stop about halfway once you get to your pupil so that you don't poke yourself in the inner corner of your eye. But as you get more experienced, you can then glide the pencil straight across. And I also recommend really pushing it into the root of the lashes. This will help with the longevity and really fill in the root of the lashes. 
when you're done, you'll see that your lash line looks so much darker and your eyelashes will look much more voluminous. This is actually one of my favorite makeup steps. It's something that I rarely ever skip because I feel like it makes such a difference to the overall look of my eyes. Step number four has to do with contouring. So when done right, contouring can define your features and create shadows on the face. We often use contouring to define the cheekbone, to make our nose appear smaller, or to create the appearance of a slimmer jawline. Now the key to making your contour look polished and elevated is proper placement and blending. On social media, we often see people take a contour stick and draw large swipes directly on the face. Now there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but it can be very difficult to blend that out. It can also remove the foundation underneath, and it can often end up looking patchy or muddy because you've added too much contour. So instead, what I recommend is to pick up some contour directly onto a brush or a sponge. I'm using the Merit Bronzing Stick in the shade Clay with the e.l.f. Complexion Duo brush and I'm going to just pick up a small amount of that. So you can see there's an even amount of product on the brush and the brush is not overloaded. And then gently stamp the product into the skin with small quick movements and keep it directly in the area where you want the contour. So for me, I just want a little bit right here in my cheekbone. And by stippling the product on instead of swiping, I'm not going to remove any of my foundation that I've already got on. So now you can see we have a very smooth application of product. It's really just confined to this area of my cheekbone. I haven't brought it too far forwards or too low on the cheek. And you can see the difference in the overall structure of my face. This side looks much more defined than this side. Using a sponge works equally as well to provide a very natural and blended finish. Step number five is to use highlighter, but be strategic with highlighter placement. Much like blush, highlighter really brings life to the face and it gives you a radiant and vibrant look. To elevate your look with highlighter, choose one that is glowy, but doesn't have any visible glitter or shimmer to it. There are so many good options. Today, I'm going to use this highlighter from the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit 4 palette, um, but I also really like the Essence Highlighter at the drugstore in the shade Be My highlight that's a really good one but the key is to using a small tapered brush something that will pick up just a small amount and allow you to put it just exactly where you want it and you're going to want to just pinpoint the areas along the face that you want to bring forward areas that you want to appear larger so for me I like to place a small amount on the very center of the cheek to really give my cheeks the appearance of more fullness and more roundness you can also place a small amount at the highest part of your cheek and then bring it up a little bit around the orbital bone. I also like to use the tip of the brush to highlight the bridge of the nose. It looks nice having some light just in the center of the face. And then I also like to take a small eye brush and place a little bit of highlighter in the corner of the eye. I think this is a very feminine and pretty look to have just a small amount of highlighter in the inner corner of the eye. And then to make the eyes appear even bigger, you can place a small amount of highlighter right under the center of the brow. The next tip is to apply lip liner both before and after applying your lipstick. You'll want to apply it before lipstick so that your lipstick doesn't bleed or feather outside of your lip lines, and it also helps to make your lipstick last longer throughout the day. You'll want to choose a lip liner that is one to two shades darker than your natural lip color for a very natural look, and try to choose one within the same tone. So if you have a lot of rosiness to your lips, you might want to choose a lip liner with some pink to it, or if your lips are not very pigmented, you could try a nude or a beige lip liner. So I'm going to use this lip liner from NYX in the shade Nude Beige, and I'm going to lightly outline my lips staying within my natural lip line. Once you've outlined your lips, apply some lipstick. 
then go back in with your lip liner to enhance the shape of your lips. You can overline them slightly in the center to create more fullness, and now is also the perfect time to even out your lips. Uh, maybe one side is thinner than the other. You can see this better when your lipstick has already been applied. So use the lip liner to give your lips more volume just where they need it. and finish off with a dot of lip gloss in the center of the lips for even more fullness. And the last tip is to use a finishing powder at the end of your makeup look. A finishing powder is a little different than a setting powder. It's a translucent powder with a super fine texture, and it can come in either loose form or pressed form, but you'll want to buff this all over the face to really meld all of the powders together and to just give you a very perfected airbrushed look. My favorite finishing powder is from Hourglass, so I'm going back with this palette, and I'm going to pick up dim light. So this is a pressed powder. It's kind of like a baked texture. It's super fine. And I'm using a Refer 19 brush, which is very light, very fluffy, and it's tapered. So what I'm going to do is gently buff this powder all over the skin, mostly focusing on the areas where I have large pores and where the edges of the makeup come together. So that would be around the contour, the blush and the highlight, and just very lightly in circular motions buffing over the makeup. Now you can see this is not adding any color. It really feels weightless, so it's not going to make the skin look cakey, but it will give the skin a blurred and filter-like effect. This step is one that I don't always do, but when I do it, I notice how beautiful the skin looks. It just looks really perfected very elevated and all of the powders blend so seamlessly together, kind of like when you buff out the outer edges of the eyeshadow. It's like doing that with the rest of the face. So those were seven easy steps to help elevate your makeup look. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. Please share with us in the comments if you have any other tips or tricks that you do to elevate your makeup look. Let us know. I would love to do a part two to this video using your tips and tricks. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye. Thank you.